Good day and welcome back to the Super Daughter Science YouTube channel. We are back to our custom chart series and today we are looking at the funnel chart. Now, the funnel chart is quite a good chart to use when you want to look at something like um, opportunities or interviews or whatever journey something takes through your organization to see at which stage um, the opportunity does either go outside of the process or continues until the end. You can also look at specific statuses that some of the opportunities are in and this funnel chart does actually work quite well for it. Today we will build our own, our own uh, representation thereof in Tableau. In fact, um, you're in for a surprise today. We are looking at two methods of doing it and uh, we'll go through both of them and see which works best. All right, let's have a look at the data we'll be working with. So firstly, um, it's the sales cycles that we'll be looking at and it's only got one sheet. Um, the Excel file will be available on the uh, link provided below, um, just as a by the way. But then um, looking at the data that we've got, you can see we've got a status column which has um, the different statuses from identify down to one and it repeats again. It's for two different divisions, the supplies as well as the technology divisions and we have a value assigned and that would be the number of opportunities that are in there. Now, an opportunity when it comes into the organization, it would first be classified as identified, next it will be pursued, we would make contact with the client, then the next step would be to um, create a proposal, go into negotiations and at the end hopefully we would have won this opportunity. In essence, that is the data that we've got and we will be working with today. Let's jump into Tableau, let's not waste any more time and connect to the Excel file. So we'll be looking at the Excel file in the funnel chart. Let's just select it, it's select the correct one, it's the sales cycle. And once we've connected to it, you will note that we've got the two divisions in there and it seems to have been imported correctly. Now, the first way of doing it is, is pretty straightforward, in fact. Um, we select our statuses as well as the value, and we change the chart type to a bar chart. In fact, we actually will change it to a, um, a stacked bar chart as such, uh, where we use the size of, um, for, for the size, we use the value or the number of opportunities, and we will just create this to the entire view. Um, doesn't look like much yet, but hang on. Um, we still need to also include the status and change the status. Um, well, basically sort the status that we've got the highest number of um, opportunities at the top, seeing as it is the identify, then pursue and all the way down to one. And as you can see, it now starts taking the shape of a funnel, a bit more of a pixelated one, I should say, but um, nonetheless, actually quite nice. So we will just also be putting the status into label as well as the value into our label. We can work on the text a little bit and just make it look a bit better as we always do. And it's apply, do the formatting. In this case, we don't want to see the number of opportunities actually. We want to see the, um, yeah, the percentage that is um, currently in that status. We can basically just change this to a quick table calculation where we make it as percentage of total. And we will then just format our, um, our number to a percentage where we'll just put one decimal space and voila, there is our funnel chart and we'll just call this funnel chart one. Actually, we can just change the tab name. So this is funnel chart number one. And obviously there's ways to improve it further. We will hide this. We can also format um, it and take away the, the, uh, the lines and the columns that has been created. So let's just do it on the sheet side. Um, we don't want any of the lines which have been created automatically. We will just remove all of them and once they are removed you'll see we sit with a much nicer looking chart that actually represents our funnel. And this management can be used to track on a you know on a weekly basis or you know point in time to see what and which at which stage our, we lose the most opportunities. And you can see in this case it is from proposal. Now you'll remember that um, we obviously had the uh, division in there as well. So this is looking for both divisions. So we could easily just drag our division into the filters uh, shelf and just select both of them. We want to display all of it 
and give the user the functionality by showing the filter. We give the user the functionality to select, I'll just change this to single value list, to select between each of the divisions and see how they differ. Yeah, and that's our first method of making a funnel chart. Right, the second way or the second method is, is a little bit more difficult, um, but the end product does look better. So let's start off by creating a new sheet and call this ch funnel chart number two. Now for this, we need to create a couple of calculated fields. In fact, one for each step of the sales cycle process or the sales cycle as, um, and here we would just start off by the first step and I'll just add a number in the front. Um, this is just to uh, give the order a bit better um, if you're not sure what the order might be and it just keeps them a little bit a nicer, separate, nicely separate. Okay, so firstly we use identify and we will start off with an if statement and we'll say if the attribute of status is equal to identity. So obviously we know that is the first, sorry, let me just identity, um, identify, <laughs> apology. Apologize. Um, so identify uh, if that is equal to identify or the lookup. If we use a lookup, we will basically see if we can find the value within a number of elements. If we find it in the lookup, also for the attribute, because we'll see if we can find this in status um, anywhere in the um, yeah from the from the current value or the yeah, the value the previous value up until the end and that's why we put the minus one there up until uh, the end so if we find anywhere it being equal to identify uh, then we'll create this well we'll output the sum of a value which is the number of opportunities within that step now this same statement we have to do a couple of times for each one like i've mentioned oh, let's just change the single quotes there once per each of the steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create all of them and just put the video in fast forward mode. You can also create it by yourself and I'll see you once it's all completed. Okay, right, now that we've created all of those measures, it's time to put them into the visualization. We'll start off by taking all of these measures and putting them into the column shelf. And you can do that by taking the measure values at the bottom there and just moving it to the columns shelf. Now we need to remove these two that came with the value as well as the number of records. Um, we wouldn't need to work with them at the moment. So they can just be dragged out of the measure values. And next we just take the status and put that into the rows column. We also need to make sure that for each of these um, calculations, we've, uh, well, under the measure values, we need to change the compute using to table down to work correctly, as we it has to look at the rest of the data down, um, down the file. So I'll just change all of them quickly, and we'll only take a second to do that. And then we change the chart type to an area chart type. We also just need to ensure if it's not like that already to take the stack marks and put them to off under the analysis menu option. And then we've got a, yeah, a funny looking chart over here, which does not reflect anything to a, um, a sales funnel yet. But however, what we could do now is just take also the status and put that onto the color shelf. And then we can see that the order is not, not quite correct here. Um, we will first, as you can see, the order should be identify, pursue, and contact, and we can just actually change this. So we'll put identify at the top, um, then we'll have pursue, I'll just change the order, then we'll have pursue. After pursue, we've got contact, which is correct. Then we need proposal. After proposal comes negotiation, and lastly one. And there you can see, there is the half of the funnels, well, the sales funnel, the funnel chart. And how do we get the other half is literally just by holding control down and taking the measure values and creating next to itself. We then just do some magic with the axis where we edit it and select reversed. So in essence, it will show from the maximum value to the minimum value. And we've basically have the other half of the funnel. Now we can just hide these labels. We don't need to see them. Uh, we'll use some different labeling. So let's just do it like that. 
and we'll just add it to the indicator because we're using the table calculations it's giving us some nulls but our values are correct okay we can also just put now that we are here to put the division um, and use both divisions into the filter filter shelf and show the filter just as we've done with the previous visualization and we will also just obviously to make this look um, like the previous one remove all lines from the sheet um, so it's again just running through all of these lines making sure they are taken off um, then let's just see one more and on columns we should have none there we are all right next we can also put the labels um, of each of these statuses which I think would be nice for our audience is to put that under onto the label and we need to make sure that we only drag it onto the left side of the chart so if we take the status over here and put that onto label as well as we also want to see the value right so we'll put that onto label at the same time and for that value we don't really care about the number we rather want the percentage so we'll just add a quick calculation or a quick table calculation a percent of total and we'll just format the um, the label to be left and at the bottom and we well let's also make it like we've done with the previous one is just format um, the, uh, the value to a percentage with one decimal and we can obviously just make this a bit bigger um, like we do it's always about the finishing touches I guess um, to make it stand out uh, and I clicked cancel let's just do that again so we'll just change this to a bigger size like I say it's always about the finishing touches and clicking the right buttons <laughs> And there is our chart now we can obviously go and also remove the columns well all of these lines that are um, basically showing us the breakdown between the charts we don't want to see that so we can just remove all of these and make our chart look great one of the limitations however you will notice is that one doesn't have a specific size over here but we can see that the bottom part of the funnel is actually the start and the basically the one and those would be all the opportunities that we have actually won so the user can again toggle between the different um, divisions and see that at what part does most of the opportunities get filtered out and you can see for technology it seems to be at the proposal side where there seems to be something happening under pursue for the supply side and our overall picture before I let you go, I'm sure you're wondering how to get rid of this line in the middle. It's quite easy. You just go onto the color tab and remove any opacity that has been given. All right, and I um, hope you've really enjoyed these two examples, each with its own uh, user case. Uh, yeah, sometimes you might need to use these blocks, blocks kind of funnel chart or a more smoother one. At least now you've got two methods on how to do this. All right, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the for for some of more of these exciting and custom charts coming up. Until next time.